Okay, chapter 11. So 11.1, .1, we're going to talk about graphing square root functions. Okay, so what is a square root function? Well, we talked about square roots, but here what we're doing is we're graphing y equals square root of x. That's our parent function, that's our basic function. So let's uh, show you how that graph looks, and then we're going to talk about a more general way of writing that equation and you know how to shift the graph, stretch the graph, reflect the graph, and so on. So first things first, we can't really take the square root of a negative number because what times itself is a negative number? We can take the square root of zero. Square root of zero is just zero. So I'm making a table here. If I put one in, the square root of one is one. If I put four in, square root of four is two. And if I put nine in, the square root of nine is three. So now if we plot these points, okay, zero, zero is right here, one, one is here, 4, 2 is here, and 9, 3 is here. And you can see what's happening is the graph is going up and to the right. So it's kind of curving. It's kind of like half a parabola, right? Okay, so when you look at this graph, the domain is whatever the x values can be. And you can see that x has to be uh, greater than or equal to 0, right? The range, the y values are also greater than or equal to 0. See, 0 or above. Now let's look at a more general form of this equation. So when you look at it in this form, y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k, I just want to make a point. If you really understand this concept that we're about to talk about here, you can apply this to any parent function to shift it, to stretch it, to reflect it, and so on. So notice the pattern here. So this number here in front, this a value, see how it's multiplying by a? If a is greater than one, it's gonna be a vertical stretch. It's gonna stretch it vertically. If it's between zero and one, it's gonna be a vertical shrink or a vertical compress. And if it's negative, it's gonna reflect it over the x-axis. So the mirror image or fold it over the x-axis, okay? The h value, this number here that's grouped with the x, this one's gonna affect the x direction. It's gonna literally pick up the graph, shift it left or right. But here's the thing, you have to remember, that it has the opposite effect. So if this was x minus two, it's actually gonna go right two. If it's x plus two, it actually would go left two. So it has the opposite effect. That's what you wanna remember when it's grouped with the x like this. When it's not grouped with the x like this, see, not underneath the square root, this is affecting the vertical shift up and down. If it's plus three, it would actually shift up three. If it's negative three, it would actually shift down three. So it has the same effect as the sine. This one has the opposite effect. So let's look at an example. Say we wanted to graph y equals 2 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 3. This is shifting the graph the left 1, see the opposite of positive 1, negative 1, and up 3. So left 1, up 3. So I'm going to think of that as my new starting point, my new origins, where everything originates from. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero in on what's left over. Okay, this is called the parent function. The a value we know is going to stretch the graph, so it's going to have this shape, but it's going to be like stretched more vertically. But what I like to do is make a table using those that parent function. So I'm gonna pick some values like 0, 1, 4, and 9. Now why do I keep picking these values? Because it's easy to take the square root of 0, 1, 4, and 9. It comes out to a nice round integer, right? So square root of 0 is 0, times 2 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1, times 2 is 2. Square root of 4 is 2, times 2 is 4. And the square root of 9 is 3, times 2 is 6. So if we plot those, but the key thing is not to plot them from this origin, to plot them from the shifted origin, because everything is going to be shifting left 1 and up 3. So we're treating that like our new starting point. So very important. So 0, 0. Then from here, I'm going to go, uh, let's see, right 1, up 2. And then I'm going to go right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to go right 9, up 6, somewhere over here. Okay, so you can see the graph's looking like like that. Now notice it curves, so it's going up kind of like slower and slower, but that's your graph. So now the questions are oftentimes going to ask you, what's the domain and what's the range? So the domain, remember, it's always what the x value can be. So I think about the x-axis, it goes left and right. So can x be over here like negative 4? No. See, there's not a point on the graph. Can it be negative 1? Yes. Can it be 0? Yes. Can it be greater than that? Sure. So you can see the domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 1, right? Now the range is what the y values can be. That's the vertical direction, that's up and down. Can y be negative? No, you see there's not any points down here. Can it be zero? No. Can it be one, two, three? Yes, or higher. So the range is gonna be y is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so you're with me so far, let's practice some examples. These three, and then we're gonna do a word problem. Okay, so see if you can do these on your own. So how do you think you would graph y equals negative three times the square root of x? Well, just from what we talked about over here, so this is important, you know, add this to your note sheet here, okay, we can see that A is negative, so that's going to reflect it. That's going to take this and do the mirror image, right, over the x-axis. 
the three is gonna stretch it, okay, because it's greater than one. So let's take a look. So if we make a table, that's probably the easiest way for this one. There's not a shift. It's not shifting left or right, up or down. So we're gonna just graph from the origin. And uh, let's pick some easy points here, 0, 1, 4, 9. So square root of 0 is 0, times negative 3 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1, times negative 3 is negative 3. Square root of 4 is 2, times negative 3 is negative 6. Square root of 9 is 3, times negative 3 is negative 9. So I'm plotting right from here, 0, 0, 1, negative 3, uh, 2, 3, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 6 is down about here. And then 9, negative 9 is like somewhere down here. So I'm just estimating a little bit here. So there's our graph. Now what's the domain in the range? Well, the domain is what x can be, right? So the domain would be x is greater than or equal to zero, and the range are the y values, that's y is less than or equal to zero, see below, see zero or below. Okay, try another example. So want to learn Algebra 1? Check out my Learn Algebra 1 video course for sale where we go through 87 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 1. We talk about the important concepts, formulas, and we go through numerous example problems together to help you learn Algebra 1. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to take you over there to get started with some of the free lessons. In the meantime, let's continue on with this video. Okay, try another example. See if you can do number two. So what do you think? Y equals one half times the square root of X minus four minus two. Okay, so what I would do is I would notice that it's shifting the opposite of minus four. It's actually shifting right four and minus two is down two, so right four, down two. So that's gonna be like our new starting point right there. Now I'm gonna focus in on the parent function. This is what gives you the basic shape of the graph. All this, uh, when you add and subtract, that just picks up the graph and moves it, shifts it, but when you multiply or divide, it stretches it or compresses it, okay? So we know it's gonna start from here, but the one half is actually going to compress it, meaning it's gonna go up slower, right? Okay, so let's pick some um, easy values. So what are some easy values here? Well, we always go back to 0, 1, 4, 9 because those are easy to take the square root of. So 0 times 1 half is 0, 1 times 1 half is 1 half, square root of 4 is 2 times 1 half is 1, square root of 9 is 3 times 1 half is 3 halves, or you could say 1.5. So let's see, so we're going to go right 1, up a half, we're going to go right 4, whoops, I'm going off the graph a little bit here, we're going up 1. So what you can see is the graph looks something like that, okay? But you can see it's been compressed and it's been shifted right 4 and down 2. What's the domain, what's the range? What do you think? Domain is what x can be, right? So x can be four or greater. So x is greater than or equal to four. What can the range be? Well, it can be negative two or higher, right? So y is greater than or equal to negative two, and you got it. Okay, let's do one more example. See if you can get this one. y equals negative two times the square root of x plus one. What do you think the plus one does to the graph? Shifts it up one, right? See, it's not grouped with the x. If it was underneath the square root, then it had the opposite effect. It would shift it left one. This is a vertical shift, positive one, up one. Now we just focus on the parent function. We notice the two is gonna stretch it, right? So it's gonna go up faster. The negative is gonna reflect it. It's gonna be uh, going down, right? So again, we're gonna just pick some easy values, right? Zero, one, four, nine, right? Because they're easy to take the square root of. So this gives us zero, negative two, negative four, negative six. We're plotting from here though, right one, down two, right four, down four, and then a right nine down six. Okay, so I'm just gonna, the more points you do, the, you know, the better the graph is, but as these numbers get larger, you know, it kind of goes off your graph, so you might have to make a bigger graph. What's the domain and what's the range? Well, it looks like the domain, that's the x values, that's greater than or equal to zero. What's the range? Those are the y values. Y is less than or equal to one. It's one or below, right? Okay, last problem, a word problem. We really wanna get good at these word problems. It says write the new equation that represents the transformation of y equals square root of x. Remember, that's our parent function, right? By stretching the graph vertically by five, shifting right seven, and down two. So what do you think that equation would look like? We're working backwards here. We're using this general form of the square root uh, function, right? So it's stretching by five, right by seven, and a down by two. Now notice the minus seven is shifting right. That's going to the right, that's positive, but this actually has the opposite sign, it's minus seven, right? This one has the same effect, minus two does shift it down two. So this is your equation right here and you got it. So, okay, we're off to a good start. Chapter 11, 11.1, graphing square root functions. Keep on going, I'll see you in the next section and uh, we'll keep on with uh, this chapter.